God bless you, Bishop Wooden here. I'm glad to be back. I've been away uh, on vacation, took a family vacation with my wife and my, my, my son-in-law and his wife, my daughter, my son, and my grandchildren. And we got some much needed rest. And uh, in a few days, I'm going back on vacation to spend some time just uh, with me and my wife and uh, 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 just, just the two of us. And we're going to have a good time. But I'm here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ teaching the Word of God. And I tell you, I tell you, uh, we've been studying Psalms 23 and the psalm could not come along at a better time. Pastors will tell you, if, if they're honest, that we really don't know what to preach and what to teach, what books to go to, what book to go to next. Um, we rely upon the Lord. And we find that when we allow the Lord to lead us, God will give us a word that is on time, that fits, that will carry us through where we are at the time. Well, the Lord led me to uh, go back to Psalms 23, and we've been studying the 23rd Psalm. And uh, tonight I am going to be talking about the Lord's rod and his staff. David said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod and thy staff, they defend me. The God of the Bible, my friends, is our defense. He's our comforter, but he's also our defense. And in these violent, violent times, we need the, the defense of the God of the Bible. Listen, the government is not going to defend you. They're busy trying to strip away our Second Amendment, Amendment rights and disarm law-abiding people. It appears with what just happened in Minnesota and what took place in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, many in law enforcement are not going to defend. I do not understand for the life of me. And I am a supporter of law enforcement. I pray for law enforcement. I, I lift them up. But let me tell you, when a man is lying down on his uh, 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 stomach, his hands are behind him, and you shout, gun. And I guess, you know, maybe today we can't trust videos. We can't trust what we see. And you just open up about five times and shoot the man. The man's lying down face first. And mind you, his crime was he was selling CDs. He wasn't killing anybody. Uh, he wasn't shooting at anyone. And, and the man is dead. I tell you, uh, it, it disturbs me. Now, I, I know that we shouldn't rush to judgment. And, and I'm not condemning any, any, any officers. But I tell you, it doesn't look good. And before we could even talk to you about that one, in uh, Minnesota, uh, there's a video out, and the lady is showing uh, where her boyfriend is laying there with his arm shot to pieces, blood's on his shirt, and she says that he told the officer that he has a concealed and carry. According to her, the officer said, uh, get your papers. As he reached, he opened fire, according to her. You actually see on the video the man lying there. You see the, his, his girlfriend taping. Turns out I'm told that the young man worked at a cafeteria and that he had no record and that he was pulled for having a busted taillight. Now, a busted taillight, my, that, that's a crime. That is a crime. I mean, we can't have that. Uh, that's, 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 uh, that's tantamount. That's, uh, that's, that's equal to being a part of uh, ISIS uh, or something, I guess. Being a little facetious and rightly so. The bottom line is that that young man is dead. I believe that one of the things that, that have taken place is that our nation has turned its back on the God of the Bible. But before I talk about that, I'm wrapping this up. I must say this. I would, it would be remiss of me if I didn't say it. And to all of those law-abiding, God-fearing, hard-working law enforcement officers, I salute you and I am praying for you and God bless you and God keep you. But there are too many of you that do not exercise the same amount of restraint and control when dealing with uh, African-American assailants that you exercise when dealing with white assailants. It seems to me that there is a, either a hatred or a fear of, of us 
Uh, I, I, even me, even myself, just a couple of weeks ago, we're at the Woman's Choice Abortion Clinic. We call the police because the escorts, these ladies who escort people from the car to the clinic, literally violated the law, walked across on our side of the, of the line. When, you, when you're protesting, they, they, they tell you where you can stand. And this white girl stands in our face and says to us, you're not going to do anything. And I mean, she is, she's being vulgar, she's being wicked. And as African-American men and women, we didn't hit her because we know that that would be suicide by cop had we, had we hit her. We didn't push her. We didn't do anything to her. We simply called the police. And in calling the police, a young female officer drove up. She parks her car. She walks past 65 members of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Young men, young women, elderly men, elderly women, church mothers, praying people. We're all there to save unborn babies. She walked past us going to the escorts who all happened to be white. And we had to call to her and say, hey, ma'am, we're the ones who called you. As she came to see what we wanted, I guess what we call it that got her attention. As I walked up to her, me, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., I have no record other than occasionally driving too fast. Pray for me. I've never been in trouble with the law. I have hosted at our church inaugural services for the late great sheriff of Wake County, John Baker, I am a friend of law enforcement. We pray for law enforcement officers. We pray for the highway patrol. We have members of law enforcement in our church. We're a friend to law enforcement. And this lady tells me as I walk up to her with my uh, iPhone with pictures to show her of the young lady violating the rules, the officer tells me, get back. She motions as though she's going to go for her firearm, I am not armed. I have on a cap, under armor, cap, a pullover t a shirt, short sleeve like a t-shirt, and a pair of jeans. There is nothing bulging from my clothes to say that I have a gun or anything. And I actually, I, I pulled up my shirt. I said, ma'am, I'm unarmed. But I tell you, I can't understand what this lady saw that made me appear to be so menacing. So I backed off of her. I backed away. I obeyed her lawful command. That might be why I'm living to talk to you today. Because I tell you, she made me feel like, and the members of the church, they gasped. She made me feel like had I not moved, uh, or wouldn't, would be a dad now. And I, I imagine there's a lot of people in the LGBT community and these pro-abortion people who would have saying, glory, glory, hallelujah, Patrick Wooden is dead and gone. But you're not going to sing that song right now because Patrick Wooden is alive and well and the members of our church and we're fired up and there are others who are fighting the good fight of faith. But back to the story. I got to wrap this up. I got to wrap this up. You got to come and hear me preach the word of the Lord tonight. I backed away from the lady. I said, hey, how, how far do I need to stand? As she went toward me, I even backed up even further because, you know, I didn't want this lady who appeared to be, to be honest, female, she appeared to be of Hispanic descent. I didn't want to be shot. And she also appeared to be a lesbian. I don't know. So what does that mean? Well, she walked like a guy, she acted like a guy, and she walked past all of us going straight to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, the escorts who, by their own confession, many of them, or self-professed uh, lesbian. So uh, I don't know that she was, but I, you know, I couldn't figure out what the problem was. To be fair to the situation, three white male police officers pulled up. They got out of the car, and those guys could not have been more professional. They could not. They 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 de-escalated the situation. They spoke to all of us. They talked with us, and and we talked to them. I, I didn't talk to this lady anymore because I didn't want to get shot. We're there to just save unborn lives. But my point I'm making is these are dangerous times. And what do we hear today uh, concerning the, 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 the danger? Uh, there is gun violence. And we need to get rid of guns. But my friends, I don't think the solution is that we make laws against inanimate objects. I've never seen a gun shoot anybody. It's people. 
It's the hearts of men. It's a nation where we can abort millions and upon millions of unborn innocent babies. I said years ago that when the lives of the unborn no longer matter, when they are cheapened to the point that 98% of abortions, especially in the black community, are, are, are performed as a means of birth control, when this becomes the law of the land, when this becomes our practice and culture, it cheapens human life for everyone. When the fruit of the womb is not sacred, senior citizens, you better look out. Black man, you better run. We better, we better grow wings. Sister, watch it. White man, you better look out because you're at the top of the food chain. But people better be careful because you know what? We're living in a day now where life doesn't matter. Human life doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter in the womb, it doesn't matter anywhere. So we need the Lord's rod and his staff to protect us. The Bible says, blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. Well, the, the downside of that scripture is, the reverse of it, the opposite of it is, cursed is that nation whose God is not Jehovah. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And we live in a sinful world. You just saw how uh, the FBI uh, contradicted Hillary. Uh, and, and prove that she was lying, prove that she violated the law, proved it over and over and over, and then concluded, but we're not going to charge her. 110 violations, 110 times she sent out classified material, and yet the same, this same government kicks a Marine out for sending out one piece of classified information, and he sent out an email to warn his fellow Marines of a two-timing Afghani soldier who would kill them. They ignored his warning and three, count them, three of our Marines were killed. But this man was uh, discharged. This man was chastened. This man was punished and he sent out one email. There are two laws now, two sets of rules, uh, two sets of justices. Well, there's really three. One for the Clintons, one for everybody else, and one for black folk. We are in some tough times. Come out tonight. Hear me teach the word of the Lord. The Bible is right, my friends. Well, I guess that's four. Because we got to, we got to notice that the unborn, the fruit of the womb, have no rights. As a matter of fact, President Obama, when he was a senator, and yes, I mentioned him, said the reason that he would not vote for the Infant Born Alive Maternity Act is that that gives the unborn baby rights like other people. My question is, what is an unborn child other than a person? I'll see you tonight. Come out, we're going to talk about God's rod and God's staff protecting us. Lord knows we need his protection.